Hello everybody and welcome to our unit 4 about carbon markets. Today I'm with Matthew Peterson. He teaches political science at the University of Ottawa in Canada. He has worked on climate change politics for 25 years and in particular on the political economy of climate change. He was an IPCC lead author for the fifth assessment report working on the chapter on international cooperation. His latest book, Transnational Climate Governance, was published in 2014. Matthew, I'm great you're here. Certainly, and thanks for having me. Can you tell us what are carbon markets? They do sound a bit weird, uh, I admit. The essential idea of using a market to deal with car carbon uh, and emissions and climate change is that while governments can be making decisions on our behalf to reduce emissions in general, um, they don't necessarily know how easy it is for different individuals or companies or universities or any other type of organization to reduce their own emissions. Those organizations and individuals will have much better information about how much it would cost them to reduce emissions than governments do. Um, so the idea is that uh, a government would uh, set up the overall limit on, on the carbon emissions and then allocate by some means permits or allowances to organizations and com uh, companies and maybe individuals but mostly companies and organizations uh, who, and who would then have to reduce their emissions to within those the, the numbers uh, that they've got allowances for but if they had surplus allowances they could sell them on to companies that found it more difficult and so the market price that would emerge would reflect uh, that, that overall um, um, constraint provided by the target, but also mean that the emissions would be being reduced where it's cheapest to do so. Um, just like in principle any market, um, uh, you know, essentially produces a price out of the scarcity between um, uh, demand and supply. Um, and so lots of our economists have been advocating for carbon markets from, well in general, environmental markets in general since the 1960s and carbon markets from the late 1980s when climate change became a big issue. Um, and usually there would be two different sort of arguments that economists would use to try and do efficient ways of uh, reducing emissions. One is that the government could impose a tax, right, so the government again is not telling any, any company or individual what to do, it's just saying it will cost you more if you use high carbon things than if you use low carbon things. Um, or they could use the market to create a market directly by saying we will reduce emissions by say 20 percent distribute those amongst the companies and uh, and then the market will decide um, who reduces those emissions okay so how do carbon markets work well governments uh, acted on this idea of a market efficiency and, uh, to create two different types of carbon markets one of these is an emissions trading system or uh, sometimes known as a cap and trade system and, and the other type is a carbon offset market so with an ETS, such as the one we have in the European Union, um, the idea is that governments turn a target to reduce emissions, let's say 20% over a certain period of time, um, into a number of allowances that are 20% below the overall level of existing allowances. Um, companies are, uh, that are regulated must uh, then hold that number of allowances that are equivalent to the total number of emissions at the end of the period. But in between that, they can trade them amongst themselves because, like we were talking about earlier, they will be learning about how, how much it costs them to reduce emissions. Um, uh, governments can uh, allocate the allowances either by just saying, giving the companies the, the, a certain number of allowances, or they can auction them. They can sell them off, obviously raise a certain amount of money for the the government themselves, but also make the companies think right at the beginning, uh, okay, do I want these allowances or not? It's going to cost me something up front, maybe I'll just wait, and, and that might mean that there are fewer allowances in the market, meaning that you can cut emissions further. Um, in practice, they do a mix of these. They, they give some out directly to some companies and they sell the rest. Um, Companies can then buy and sell these allowances depending on whether they've got more than they need or whether they've got uh, less than they need. Um, hence, that's the reason for the term cap and trade. The government sets a cap and then the companies trade to, 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 find, a, to find the most efficient and cheap 
sources of emissions reductions. An offset work market works rather differently. So an offset market, the ones that you'll be most familiar with is if you've bought a, a plane ticket with Lufthansa or whoever recently, then most of those plane tickets now you can go and click on a button to say, do you want to offset your emissions? Uh, and what happens that is you're putting a, a certain number of euros or dollars or whatever currency um, into a project um, organized by some, some other company or an NGO um, to um, reduce emissions somewhere else in the world by roughly the equivalent of those that are caused by the flight. So you'd be, that, that money would be used to invest in a wind turbine or in a biomass plant or something somewhere, usually in developing countries, but not always. Um, the, uh, what has to happen for that, for that whole system to work is that the person who is putting in the wind turbine or the, wind turbine or the bi biomass plant will sit there and say, look, we're going to build this biomass plant. It is going to reduce emissions by however many tons it is compared to what the emissions would have been without the project. So they'll be making a claim, for example, that the wind turbine is displacing a coal plant um, and therefore the emissions will be much less. And they get a certain number, and, and if they make that claim credibly to the, to the people who regulate that market, then they will be given a certain number of credits, tons of carbon credits, um, that they can send, then sell, sell on to you and I who want to offset our emissions from flights. Um, that's how it's supposed to work. It's, it's in practice a lot more complicated, but that's the basic idea that you're compensating or offsetting emissions from some of us uh, 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 by, by investing in a project which claims to reduce the emissions for us. Um, the two types of, the biggest of our, those offset markets is the clean development mechanism, which is part of the Kyoto Protocol in, in the UN. And so that's a government regulated one where it's essentially the, the, the UN uh, apparatus that decides if Project X or Y is actually reducing emissions or not. Um, but there's also a, a market called the voluntary carbon market, which if you're buying ones to uh, credits to offset your flight, that's, that's where you're buying that. And then you've got a series of NGOs and business groups who are validating whether or not the project is any good or not. The two types of markets can, however, be linked. So, for example, in the European Union, the companies that are regulated under it can go and buy credits under the clean development mechanism and then bring them into the European system. Um, so yeah. there is a way of linking. And most of the cap and trade systems that are now existing in the world have an offset provision, so companies can go and find offsets somewhere. OK. Yeah, sounds very good in, in theory, but let's be honest. How important are these markets at all? Well, they, they, they're very controversial, that's true. Um, uh, they are, they have, however, grown. I mean, the, the first point to say is that they've grown very, very rapidly. Um, they grew particularly rapidly in the first uh, decade of the 2000s. Um, so you had the Kyoto Protocol, which was the first sort of really big one. So that's got an emissions trading system and two offset markets, actually. The clean development mechanism is the best known, but there's another one as well. Um, and then you had the European Union system, which has been in place since 2005. Uh, you've got subnational systems in North America, uh, one known, known as REGI, which is actually it was just the acronym for the Regional Greenhouse Gas Emission, which is all of the northeastern states in the US. You've got one now operating between, Western, uh, between California and Quebec um, uh, under the sort of rubric of an organization called the Western Climate Initiative, and the province of Ontario is going to join that. So that means that between REG REGI and WCI, something of the realm of 50% uh, of North American emissions are going to be covered, because you know, Ontario, California, New York State, these are all big parts of the US system, uh, North American system. Uh, and then there was a sort of dip during the financial crisis. Um, some of the policy mo movements slowed down. You had one in New Zealand. Uh, an ETS in New Zealand, but they sort of pulled back from a bit. Australia kept trying to, a few governments in Australia tried to introduce one, and then the current government said no way. Yeah. Um, there were attempts in the US to develop an, a cap and trade system federally, but they stalled. This is in the second part of the Bush years and into the early part of the Obama years. Um, but then since, since then, you've got a more, more rapid expansion again. So you now have a number of ones in China, you've got, you've got a one in, uh, at the subnational levels, and you've got one in um, uh, a national one now in Korea, which is the second biggest in the world now. Um, so it's not, so they're quite, carbon markets now cover roughly like sort of 20% of global emissions. 
um, and they have been widely criticised, um, but it doesn't seem to have stopped them uh, expanding. The sort of government seem to have got this idea that uh, actually this is the way, this is a, an important way to go. It's also, I think, the, the useful to sort of um, think about it in terms of governments. But the relationship between carbon markets and other policies. And I think governments increasingly are thinking of carbon markets or a carbon tax, one or two of them done that as well, as a sort of setting a general incentive across the whole of the economy. But then you need to do all sorts of other stuff as well. You need to build green infrastructure, you need to be regulating housing, you need to be doing all sorts of other things, investing in new technologies and so on. So you see um, uh, all sorts of other policies emerging in countries. In Germany, the feed-in tariff is, is one of the, the best examples, um, where, which has been very successful and is now being copied elsewhere in the world as well. Um, but, it's, but, but nevertheless, lots of those policies, at least governments and economists would argue, are sort of made more attractive because there is this background incentive of a carbon price provided by the market. Thanks for giving us an overview. Mm -hmm.